Saturday at 7.30. Welcome to Love Connection. Today, you'll meet Shauna. She claims that she's never had a bad date. Yesterday, the audience voted on which of these three men would be best for her. Today, you'll hear who Shauna chose as her date. And you'll meet Gwen. She says that she doesn't let her family set her up. Which of these men did she choose? Which will our audience choose? Today, on Love Connection, you'll find out. And you'll hear everything that happened on their dates. Now, here's our host, Chuck Flurry. Get started by meeting our first guest. She's originally from Portland, Oregon. She likes bike riding, water skiing, picnics. She describes herself as hyperactive, and she thinks that the key to a good relationship is taking care of yourself. Please welcome Shauna Brody. Now, what do you mean by taking care of yourself? Physically fit, that kind of thing? Yes, I think it's very important when you find yourself not dressing up anymore for your boyfriend and not putting on enough makeup and exercising and eating right. That's the time when all of a sudden you find yourself taking each other for granted, watching TV, having popcorn in front of your television, and you become fat and happy. <laughs> you said you never had a bad date. No. I have a rating schedule that either a date is good, wonderful, or fantastic. But and nothing falls under mediocre, bad. Well, I guess most people would call um, everything, would be, it would be more bad, average, and good. But I'm an optimist, so I like to bump everything up. So it's, you know, if, you get, if it's you bad, that, then it's just really good. You do good. that with everything in life? Yeah, it's just about. Okay. All right. <laughs> Works for you. That's good. All right. Let's remind everybody what happened yesterday. Yesterday, our studio audience saw Shauna's three choices, and they voted for one. And take a look at all three men again, catch you up to date. First, there's uh, Loris. He's an avid golfer. Describes himself as reserved. Adam is looking for a woman with a California body and a New York mind. <laughs> Andy told us that uh, he's outgoing, he's very funny, that he wears designer underwear. <laughs> his word for that. Now, the audience vote was recorded yesterday. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later, but right now, Sean is going to tell us who she chose. I chose Andy. Chose Andy. Say hello to Andy Rogan. Wow, it's not big, guys. Oh, it's been pretty good. <laughs> Andy, just uh, make yourself at home back there and jump in when you feel like it, okay? Sure, thanks. All right. Well, tell me about this date. Well, um, I picked him up because he said that his car was in the shop. Yeah. And so I, I drove up there. I got lost twice going to his house. And when I finally got there, the place was an absolute shambles. It was a shambles? It was the worst <laughs> apartment I've ever seen. It was? Apartment. Really? <laughs> from the Optimus, this must have really been bad. There was, there was garbage on the floor. Garbage on the garbage floor? Garbage on the floor. There was um, containers of, ch of Chinese food that had been there like for five oh, days. Oh, shit! <laughs> it was suitcased with like men's undergarments and everything was all thrown away. Was it designer? I didn't look at those. Uh, they purposely threw garbage all over the place just as a joke, just so she can, like, you know, get a kick out of it. But she didn't. She just sort of, like, walked in, and she didn't think it was funny. I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what happened next? Then Andy uh, came out, and uh, he had his toothbrush in his mouth, still brushing his teeth. Foaming <laughs> his at the toothbrush um, foaming at the mouth. Yeah. And I was kind of a little bit disappointed in the way he was dressed, because his shirt tail was untucked. And the only reason I could think was, you know, either he's going to tuck it in after he brushes his teeth, or he wanted me to read the little label that was on it. <laughs> designer. You yeah. Know, like the label's on the shirt tail. Maybe he thought he should have it hanging out so that everybody could see that it was like a designer shirt. Why, why, was, why was it on the Well, first of all, it was, a, it was a shirt I bought at Target, so I wasn't trying to impress her with that. Uh, good point. Well, what, uh, what did you think of Shauna in person, Andy? Excuse me? What did you think of Shauna in person? Oh, I thought she was attractive when, she, when, she, when I first met her. I thought she had very nice breasts. Well, then we decided to go to the horse races. <laughs> Whoa, what happened? And it, it, was, it was really, you know how the races, they get, they're really crowded, right? Yeah. And most gentlemen, at least that I've gone out with, will at least like grab your arm or put your hand in the middle of their back to guide you around. Yeah. Well, 
I was going like, hey, wait up for me, here I am. He showed no, no um, compassion or romantic or, you know, he just didn't give me any compliments or... It's, it's just no like my buddy. Yeah, but it's hard getting romantic at the racetrack when you have bagmen sitting around puffing cheap cigars. <laughs> like the, uh... You can be romantic wherever you yeah. are. So what happened next? Well, um, then we drove back to his place and... Um, Right when we got there, the phone rang, and it was his three friends calling. Well, actually, probably only one was on the phone at the time, but they wanted to come over and see me. They did? I felt like... <laughs> and, like play or something. They had, I had to wait at his apartment for them to come and view me. You did? And, yeah. So I did. Did you... How, how come you invited your friends over? We have a contest, and whoever has the ugliest steak that week has to buy dinner the next week. I think she'll rank in those, uh, anyway, what happened next? Well, the, the <clears throat> friend saw me, and, uh, so then we decided it, to have the second part of our date. There's another part. Well, uh, this was the best part. Oh, good. We decided to go put antifreeze in Andy's car. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty romantic touch. Well, how, how did the date end? Goodbye. <laughs> uh, are you, are you always like this on a date, Andy? I, I get the feeling that maybe you, you are on a first date. Is that true? Or Absolutely. Not? You you know, yeah, oh yeah. You know, you know, some girl, you know, Shauna left, but most girls just stay. I just stack myself and most of them stay. Yeah. She was unfortunate, you know, one of the unfortunate ones to leave. <laughs> well now, see, you're, <laughs> I gotta ask this. <laughs> Your rating system is good, great, fantastic, or whatever. Yeah. How would you rate this date? Good, which kind of means bad. <laughs> Sometimes bad is bad, yeah. Well, let's take a look and see who the audience picked for you. <laughs> audience picked Andy at 64. <laughs> okay. Well, if you would like to take our audience's advice and ask Andy out again, we'll pay for it. If not, you can remain on your own, do what you want to do. Maybe on the second date, he's terrific. You never know. Well, I think uh, the audience's first impression, as mine, were wrong, and I'll stay on my own. <laughs> well, Andy, uh, anything to say in parting? Uh, no, just, you know, thanks for having me on, and if it wasn't for Sean, my car would have overheated. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, things didn't work out for you, but uh, you're a nice gift, we'll see you again. Thanks, goodbye. Sean, you're on your own mind. I'm sure you'll be well. Thank you for coming on the show, and we're going to make you too. We're going to come right back with another couple. We'll do that in just a minute. Stay with me. And here's the star of the dating game, Elaine Joyce. Oh, thank you very much, and welcome to the dating game. You know, Flip Wilson once said, you can't expect to hit the jackpot if you don't put a few nickels in the machine. That's kind of like the single scene. You gotta go out there and roll the dice. Just like our first three bachelors. They're ready to take a gamble, so let's meet them right now. Hi there, bachelors. Hi, Elaine. Bachelor number one, what's your name? Michael Merrill. Hi, Michael. You say you're a clothing artist. What, what is that exactly? Well, in the last six years, I've hand-painted about 16,000 pieces of women's clothing. Oh, are they wearing the clothes when you paint them? They sure are. <laughs> what? Really? It's the only way I paint. You have a nice job there. It's fun. <laughs> Bachelor number two, what's your name? Uh, Andy Roden. You have an interesting way to meet, uh, meet women. You want to tell us what it is? Awesome way, the best. Oh, yes? Yeah, what? I dress up as a doctor. Right, you know, surgical gear, this, you know, the little thing around the neck, what's it called, the stethoscope, whatever. Uh -huh. And I wait for women to come out of grocery stores. And uh, when they, uh, you know, when they check me out, of course, I return the favor and not check them out. I won't even ask you about your bedside manner. Please don't. <laughs> Bachelor number three, what's your name? My name's Bruce Blur. Hi, Bruce. And, um... And you're looking for a special type of woman, you say. What is that? I'm looking for the kind of girl that goes crazy about horses and bubble baths. <laughs> oh. Well, Bruce, I hope you have a big tub. A Better real big tub. <laughs> Good luck, fellas. <laughs> a big tub. Now, it's time to 
can find out something about the woman who gets to choose one of these three guys, and here she is now, April Whitney. How are you? Nice to meet you. April, you say you you posed in Playboy as a woman of the airwaves? Yes, I did. As Do you want to tell us about that? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I guess I'd better, huh? Uh, I'm a disc jockey at a radio station here in Los Angeles, uh -huh. a rock station, and Playboy wanted to do a pictorial on women DJs. They were going to take a closer look at the person behind the voice. And we're talking close. Very we're very talking close. <laughs> close, I see. Well, let's see how close our first three bachelors can get to you with their voices, all right? Okay. Bachelor number one, why don't you say hello to April? Hello, April. Kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> and bachelor number two. Love me tender, love me true. Pick me, dear, I'm number two. <laughs> okay, bachelor number three, say hello. Hello. That guy stole my line, but I'll do it anyways. <laughs> well, hell, hell, April, hello. I'm the one for you to make your dreams come true. you sit down here i'm sure you have your questions and you're all set i'm ready all right let's go okay bachelor number one how you doing fine april oh uh, i'm a dish jockey like we said at a major los angeles rock station i can't say the call letter so pretend you're a dj and in your very best dj voice let's hear you rattle off some song titles you hope will describe our first date together. Nat King Cole did a few good ones. Uh, oh no, like songs aren't my greatest thing. What is? Just walking in the moonlight and things like that. Oh, okay, bachelor number two, how about you? Rattle off in your best DJ voice some song titles that describe our first date together. Well, you know, it's like six o'clock in the morning, you know, like you gotta get up for work and like, we've got like the turn of the century music on, we've got like the long walk on the beach, like falling from the waterfall. Let's have like massive makeout sessions. So get up and wake up. <laughs> Were there any song titles in there? All song titles. Oh, okay. We can play them together. Okay. Bachelor number three, how about you? This is Bachelor number three and the radio station with the best music. The best music is All Shook Up, Love Me Tender, and Splish Splash, I was taking a bath. <laughs> Thank you, number three. Bachelor number two. Recently, like Elaine and I talked about, I appeared in a Playboy pictorial called Women of the Airwaves. Look at bachelor number three and tell me if he were to appear in a pictorial, what would its name be? Leave it to Beaver. <laughs> no! Is that the same guy that sang Love Me Tender? Yeah. Oh. Bachelor number two, that's the guy. Okay, number one, your turn. What about bachelor number two? Oh. Words cannot describe what I'm looking at. <laughs> like the nameless um, pictorial. Well, Godzilla comes to mind. <laughs> no, and uh, once you get past his nose, I guess he's okay. Okay, nice guy. Uh, number three, did I ask you this question? What should Bachelor number one's pictorial be called? A bandit stepchild, because if I had a brother look like him, I'd ask my parents to adopt him. Yeah, nice guys. They you took know. care of each other, didn't they? <laughs> okay, bachelor number three, it's your turn again. Thank you. I find intellectuals very sexy. In your sexiest voice, convince me that you're an intellectual. My books are stacked so well with the mattress upon them. We will read them until we upon the books, upon the books that we will be upon. <laughs> Isn't he a sneaky guy or what, huh? Well, there's a variety here to choose from. And I think you have a feeling of who you want to choose. I see it going through your mind, April. You sit there and think about it, and we're just going to take this little break. to the dating game and now april this is the moment of truth this is when you take one of our bachelors will it be bachelor number one bachelor number two 
or bachelor number three? Which guy's going to be the lucky guy? Uh, don't keep him waiting. Oh, well, let him wait. Oh, uh, okay. It was the, the love me tender number two. Oh, Great. Now, why did you choose him? Was it just because of Love Me Tender or what? Uh, well, uh, he, he's, Bachelor number one said he had a, a nose that you had to get past, and that means he's probably a smart guy. Uh -huh. Aha! And, uh, <laughs> we hope. And I liked his, um, hello, the Love Me Tender really got me. I knew Seriously. it. I know. All right, let's meet the two you didn't choose okay. first. Bachelor number one is looking for a woman that he can enjoy an equal and loyal partnership with. That sounds great. Michael Merrill. Michael, come here and meet April. Michael, meet April. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And you didn't choose bachelor number three. He's a carpenter contractor born in Buffalo, New York. Meet Bruce Blair. Bruce, meet April. Thanks a lot, Bruce. All right. And now, you ready? Oh, you don't have to do a thing, believe me. You are perfect. Let's meet the guy you did choose. Bachelor number two is an oil broker looking for an adventurous woman. Meet Andy Rodin. Oh, Andy, meet April. to say anything because this is telling the story. Want to hear about your date? Yes. Please, very much. No, actually no. <laughs> no, you don't. This is, see how this is what you call instant chemistry? I love it. Ah! Okay. Look at this. Is this great or what? <laughs> don't worry. Nobody's looking. Oh. oh, no. Here's your date. Get ready to float through islands of fantasy on your dream date too. The gorgeous golden shores of Tahiti. That's right, Evelyn and Andy. You're Jeff from Los Angeles to Papaete for a captivating cruise around Tahiti and her enchanting islands. It's truly an exotic adventure where every port of call will entice you with tantalizing tropical delights. You'll drop anchor in beautiful Bora Bora, where you can splash in sapphire seas teeming with rainbows of friendly fish. Sail on to Hoahene, a gardenia-scented isle where you can wind your way through verdant jungles that hide ancient temples and petroglyphs. Then explore the romantic trails of Morea, where sheer volcanic mountains plunge into breathtaking bays of crystal blue. You and your dating game chaperone will spend eight spectacular days aboard American Hawaii Cruises SS Liberté. Tour the French Polynesian Islands by day, dine and dance the evening hours away to glittering entertainment aboard Tahiti's magnificent floating resort, furnished by American Hawaii Cruises. It's a magical world of stunning sunsets and shores of sugar-soft sand. No matter where you wander, you'll always find yourself in paradise on your dream day to warm and wonderful Tahiti. It's perfect. I know. Perfect. I he smells good. He looks good. He's got the right clothes. He's... And Andy, what do you think of April, huh? Outstanding. Outstanding. I guess this is going to work out just fine, huh? How many?